Welcome or welcome back to Lift You Up Inspiring Health Stories. I'm your host, Tamika Bickham. I'm the founder and chief storyteller of TV Media Group. But for the purpose of this podcast, I am your health and happiness matchmaker. Now, before I introduce you to today's guest, you know what I'm going to ask you to do. Go ahead and hit subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. Turn on those notifications and connect with me on LinkedIn because I'd love to stay connected with you. Now, today we are going to meet a nonprofit founder and executive director. Her name is Daniela Gruenthal. Her background is in architecture and design, and she also has a passion for giving back to those who most need it. Now, she started going on mission trips to Haiti and then combined her desire to give back with her background in architecture and design, and she created domes for Haiti, where they are building sustainable structures for their futures. Our physical, mental, and emotional health is not just a want, it is a need for happy lives and prosperous businesses. Lift You Up is the podcast where we share inspiring health stories from business owners who are fulfilling their purpose to live their healthiest lives and helping you do the same. From former TV reporter to marketing entrepreneur and content creator, I care about sharing stories that matter and stories that connect us. I'm your host, Tamika Bickham, your health and wellness matchmaker. Well, today I'm so excited to meet the one and only (laughs) Daniela Gruenthal, who is the founder and executive director of Domes for Humanity, who I've heard a lot about, I have to say, (laughs) from our mutual connection, JP, over the last two years. So it's nice to finally meet you. Yeah, it's awesome to meet you. Same. I've heard so much about you and finally get to talk with each other. I know. And we're both in South Florida, which is nice. Um, So not really too far from one another. But tell me, um, I guess, a a little bit about you and Domes for Humidity and what you do. Awesome. Yeah. So my background is in architecture and design and um, currently still work on many projects in South Florida and throughout the States. And also, uh, my baby, Domes for Humanity, <laughs> I like to call, uh, it was founded in 2018. So it was founded out of, out of a love for humanitarian design and uh, quite frequent mission trips that I've been on and realized that there was a need for disaster relief housing that was not only sustainable, but more of a beyond shelter approach um, to disaster relief building. So. Awesome. I'll give you a little bit of a background too. Yeah, yeah. Things. I was going to ask that because I always love to know, um, you know, just so so you and any listeners who are aware too, at least once a month, I love to fo- feature nonprofits on this show. Um, and that's just because I love purpose-driven businesses, entrepreneurs, and obviously nonprofits definitely fall into that category. Um, and it's always interesting meeting founders of nonprofits and like how you decided to come up with this idea for this nonprofit, or it could be, you know, a business um, or a for-profit business as well. But usually, the nonprofit founders have a lot of times experienced something that has impacted someone in their own life or something personally, or like you mentioned, mission trips. So, before we we get into that, why? Because I know you have a purpose behind it. Tell me about the architecture and design background and how you ultimately ended up where you are now so we can get the the behind the scenes of what led you to where you are. Yeah, definitely. Um, So background, uh, university studies in interior architecture, and my work has been in various projects involving government, commercial, hospitality work. I lived in Virginia for a few years, like 10 years ago, and worked on uh, government projects there and across the southeast. So uh, my background has been rooted in construction, too, because of my family background, having a family construction company. So I like to say I grew up on construction sites. <laughs> so, interesting. Yeah, so Very have, interesting. Yeah, and have you always yeah. liked that industry and being in the con- construction space? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Um, even going to school, I knew exactly what I was going to go to school for and, you know, quite fortunate knowing what I wanted to do, not where I wanted to go necessarily. I ended up staying in Florida for university, but I had a, a great experience, at least of growing up my childhood that kind of set the tone for what I do now. Yeah, no, and I, I love that. I mean, it's, it's not an industry I know 
that much about as far as architecture, construction, and all of that. But I can imagine it's really interesting. Um, it gets really detailed. So working on a lot of government projects, um, it sounds like, and, and, and then you came back, you were in Virginia and came back to South Florida at some point? Yes, yes. I came back to South Florida in 2013. So uh, that's when I kind of started moving towards uh, domes and research and nonprofit research management. And uh, yeah, I, I found out about domes and the architecture, uh, not only from my background in studying it um, uh, throughout design school, but uh, specifically, there's a dome school that I went to to get certified in Texas to build, and I went there in 2014. So, uh, yeah, and I learned about building monolithic domes in specific. So those are just monolithic means one shell. So it's different from uh, many of you may know uh, geodesic domes, and those are those triangular shaped. So there's plenty of those throughout even South Florida. I've driven by. Okay. So let's assume cool. none of us know about yeah. domes, period. So tell, yeah. I mean, even just, okay, tell me what a dome is. Yeah, so a dome is a thin shell, steel reinforced concrete building. So if you just look at an egg, pretty much, you know, an egg like horizontally, that curved shape, it's that's a dome. So the structure of it itself is extremely strong and just taking an egg at home, if you put it in your hands, clasp it, and try to break it, put pressure on it, you won't be able to break it. So that's the same physics of what a dome does, and that's why it's so extremely durable and resistant to natural disasters. And why I thought that this is the perfect solution for disaster relief building, rather than pouring money into something that fails every time there's a disaster. Okay. Wait, hold on, just to clarify, if I take an egg, yeah and take like from top to bottom or like it is it in half like because i'm going to try this yeah yeah the, so the two ends of the egg put it in your hand just try to press on it as much as you can you won't be able to break it <laughs> so interesting that and same that's a, yeah same thinking is behind a dome and why it can be used for shelter yes exactly and even going back to thinking igloos right a couple of people would be like you know those are the very futuristic looking domes and i'm like they are a future forward but they've been around for centuries and think of like the pantheon in italy in rome that's still standing and that's a dome so they last for centuries oh yeah, really cool basis behind why we want to build with these rather than uh, traditional square buildings with roofs because this doesn't have a roof it won't even blow off <laughs> Okay, now I'm seeing how like this is the perfect marriage of all like your experiences and your skill set and all the yes. things you've learned. So 2014, you go to what was it a, a dome building certification? Yes, it's called uh, the Monolithic Dome Institute. Okay, and yeah, it's in Texas. You take a course to learn how to build it. So I was one of the two women there, and the other woman, Suzanne, she's on my board. So it was awesome. And she builds domes for cold weather climate. And we decided to collaborate. And I asked her if she would be part of my board. And so we help each other out in our um, endeavors with domes. Awesome. So okay, so I, what, you're one of two women. How, and how many people are in this class? Uh, there's at least 20. Yeah. yeah, well, glad to see you and your colleague there because I mean, I'm sure there's much needed, uh, more women in this space as well. So glad yes. <laughs> you were there representing. Yes, definitely. More women are needed in the STEM industry and yeah. Yeah, gotta put our ideas forward for the future. So what sparked the interest in wanting to further your knowledge around domes? Were, I know you briefly mentioned mission trips, so I definitely wanna talk more about that. Did those come before or, or what was really the catalyst for that? Yeah, throughout growing up in my childhood, like uh, starting around middle school, I started doing community volunteer projects. And then high school, I took a few missions trips internationally. I've been to several places, Dominican Republic, um, hadn't been to Haiti at the time, but um, also Orlando locally, Habitat for Humanity, doing work with them locally and uh, in Bahamas. So that became a love for me and doing volunteer work and helping repair buildings and helping families and children after disasters. But 
what really got me to researching domes and starting domes for humanity was from an actual dream that I had. So this dream actually happened over the course of a decade between when I was in high school and then in college and then when I was living in Virginia. So the dream was that I was standing on top of this mountain, did not know where it was, what country, but I was overlooking these rounded huts and seeing a bunch of families uh, in them. And then a bunch of kids came running up to me, they hugged me, and then the dream stopped. So I took that as, okay, it's gotta mean something. A dream happens three times, you know, it's the same exact dream. And then uh, with the process of being certified in 2014, up until being founded uh, in 2018, I have my partner in Haiti, the Renan Foundation, and they said, listen, come out for a trip. You'll see what we're all about and what we do. And I said, sure, let's go. April 2018, the morning that I get there, he said, let me take you to a spot where I wanna build a community center. So the spot was on top of a mountain and I get there and I'm overlooking the exact scene that was in my dream. So I wow, like, okay, this was wow. definitely a vision, a calling, you know, that God placed in my life. So Absolutely. I figured, you know, it's something that I need to pursue and I knew that's where I was supposed to be. And it's crazy. So I got it's... chills from that story. <laughs> I know. So I usually get emotional even still to this day when I talk about it, just because it's so prophetic and what yeah. we do. And I knew that there was something. Now, was that your first trip to Haiti in, in what was that, April 2018? It was. It okay. was. That was my first trip to Haiti. Yeah. Awesome. So, okay. So I'm sure there was an emotional moment when you're. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I'm just like, reliving that scene. Yeah. Just tears were just flowing. And I told my partner, Andisa, said, you know the dream I told you about? He's like, yeah. I was like, this is it. And then he choked up and he's like, what? So, yeah, it was incredible. Just a moment where it solidified, like, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be, what yeah. I'm supposed to be doing. So, yeah. Because no the intention, there. right, the intention of the trip was was really, I guess, um, I think I got the name, was Randstad? Renand Foundation. Renand, sorry. Yes. Renand Foundation yeah, yeah. was not the a partner at the time, but there was a relationship at the time, I guess, as far as... Right. We had just met uh, early 2018 uh, when I found it, and I said, I just founded this organization, and we're gearing towards helping other nonprofit organizations who don't have a disaster relief building program or that do and want to restructure it to make it more sustainable. So he was very interested and said, yeah, absolutely. Come take a look at the village in Bleu where we operate and see if that's something that we can partner in. So I said, yes, let's go. Awesome. Yeah. So what happened from there? So that pivotal moment, uh, I even met this family of eight while I was there that I currently sponsor monthly. And another like amazing moment that happened, I'll just add, is that uh, they had a little boy the last day of our trip and we went to visit and it was hours later that she had, I mean, little newborn. And I asked the name and she said that she didn't have a name for him yet. And my father actually happened to be on the trip with me because he's a builder. And she said, I would love for you to name him. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, that is that is just such an honor. Like, I'm right, right. You need to name your child. So uh, in Haiti, it's typical to add a son after a name. Uh, so my dad's name is Robert. So I said, would you like to name him Robertson? And so that little baby boy, is named Robertson, and that's the family that I sponsor. And so I have such a connection and a love to Haiti, uh, not only from the dream, but from personal experiences and interactions and just how much love there is and hospitality there is when I'm there. And it's just the most beautiful community of people that I've met. So it's home to me, it's a second home. I love this story. So tell me about then, Domes for Humanity, um, a little bit more about, it sounds like, building um, homes that can withstand natural disasters. Is that right? Yes, yes. So domes can resist up to 400 mile an hour winds, uh, 8.0 earthquakes, which are incredibly strong, um, EF5 tornadoes, um, 
fire, flooding, rot, it's all resistant to those. And in the States, they're actually uh, FEMA rated, so they surpass code um, for FEMA as well. So they're known to be more like a, a bunker type of shelter, uh, but something that's livable, livable and aesthetically pleasing. We can incorporate into the design like any cultural aesthetics of the communities we're in. So the whole purpose is to train the community on how to build them so that they can continue building when we're not there and create a sustainable platform so they can build, they can create jobs in their community. We help boost their local economies by purchasing materials locally and really have the foundation of what it means to continue their stories like for generations to come. Wow. And and which communities are you doing this in right now? Yep. So Bassam Blue is in the southeast and those we already have our materials there. But this year it was just so difficult and challenging to get back to Haiti, except for the, finally we were able to go there in October. So we're doing our build trip in the first quarter of next year. And we met with new partners in the Southwest as well in October. And with them, we'll be rebuilding for the earthquake survivors uh, from August that happened this August 14th. So uh, that was a 7.2 earthquake. So incredibly um, devastated the areas that we were in um, in the Southwest and meeting with families. We met with at least 15 families while there. So we have a campaign now to build 200 homes campaign. So that'll help over 1100 families get new homes and continue building as well and build local shelters. Wow. So they can at least um, take refuge in during these earthquakes. Right. And and the main reason that you weren't able to get there this year, I mean, Haiti has just been going through so much. So um, much. Yeah. Was, the, was the earthquake, I mean, I guess globally we're all going through COVID. Um, I know there was a lot of unrest um, and other issues going on. So I guess all of that combined. Yeah, exactly. It's been extremely traumatic there for everyone, um, especially just this year in general. Uh, in July, also, the president was assassinated. There's been continued unrest, as we know from the news, uh, gangs basically taking over. There's many kidnappings. Um, so the safety is a huge concern. Um, they were going through a fuel shortage as well. Um, so it was just one domino effect after another. So we said, you know, it's not safe to go right now. And we said, we'll try again. We tried in October and we we're, you know, much more safer about it. We just directly, when we fly in, it's to the capital and then we take a plane from there and to the Southwest. So there we avoid the roads and any danger we could face there. But, um, Gotcha. Yeah, it's uh, it's very hard what they're facing. Uh, they just seem hopeless. This was a totally different trip. I was telling many people after coming back, um, though their hearts, you know, I, I feel like there is so much joy there still. But this time around, we just saw a lot of hopelessness in their eyes, thinking, you know, what's next? And that's what I think everybody says all the time is like, oh gosh, like Haiti again. <laughs> Like there's always constant between natural disasters and um, government unrest. And so it's been hard, it's been very hard, but mm. we're still determined to say, you know what? Like we're not giving up on Haiti, we're not giving up on the people, you know, they are not forgotten. So we want to make sure, okay, this is not a lost cause. This is just a beginning in trying to redevelop um, a country so they can thrive continuously for the future. So it's hard right now, but we want to show them that we'll bring hope and healing at least to their lives. So the campaign is to build 200 homes there and, um, and you know, teach them to be able to build these so that it is an economic driver as well. Um, I guess what what else is is there anything else in the works for homes? I'm and I don't say that as as if you don't have your hands full. I know yeah. we can talk about your <laughs> fundraisers and you're going on the build trip. So I don't I don't say that like what else you got going on? Yeah, no, <laughs> we got a lot of our sleeves. So. <laughs> I that's what that's what I sensed. So I figured I would open the door to talk about any of those other things, or if you plan to expand into other countries. Yes. Yeah, so 
uh, with our program anyway of building shelter. And I mentioned earlier, we want to go beyond shelter and beyond shelter, meaning we partner with clean water relief organization. So we actually incorporate uh, sanitation and uh, hygiene facility, not only within their home because um, they should have uh, the dignity of feeling, you know, they, they're taking care of their sanitation, their hygiene is, you know, at least up to par because um, that's something that in Haiti they're not used to having even bathroom inside their home. So uh, partnering with clean water relief and uh, rebuilding their water wells as well. Um, they have water well houses that they got destroyed in the earthquake. So presented also this opportunity of, hey, you can have a dome, just take shelter. Uh, they have these water wells and take shelter in the dome. So uh, that's another opportunity that uh, we have in the works. And also building in other countries. Uh, we have, uh, we're working on Bahamas. So there's something there we're working on. And also locally in South Florida, because this is something I want to even bring to our state. I mean, I'm from here, so I'm like, oh, I know what the lack of affordable housing is like too. And there's a tremendous need for it here in South Florida and building domes for affordable housing because it is a sustainable affordable option it's something that people could pay weekly for rent with a very small amount of 100 to 200 dollars a week and it's something that would get at least homeless off the streets and into their own community and get them out of the tents so working on public private partnerships for that and Beyond that, we're we're gonna be in the process of uh, doing some other work. So, yeah. No, I mean you're plenty it's busy. Exciting. I I guess the question that comes to mind to for me is, I I haven't heard of building with domes. I'm clearly not in that space, so I may just be out of the loop. But is this something that is relatively new as far as building these four homes, um, or, or that's being done other places? Yeah, so domes, they're actually across the states. Um, there's tons of them, like in the Midwest as well, where there's tornadoes that are frequent. Um, and California as well with earthquakes, Colorado. Uh, so it is popular, just not as much in South Florida. So not many of us know about this design, which we need for people even along the beaches. You know, all the homes that are along the beaches, actually there's this one called Dome of a Home. Uh, the owners there, they built it uh, in response, or actually before Hurricane Ivan. So it's been through a few hurricanes, but uh, just a case study there is that this home is about 3,200 square feet, literally right on the beach, on the ocean front, like yards from the water. Uh, when a few hurricanes went through and devastated like Hurricane Ivan, Hurricane Matthew, and all the other homes surrounding the domes were demolished, it was still standing. So. It's wow. uh, and even the news crew took refuge in it during that time. So they should be popularized more. And uh, we are hoping to be able to do that because, you know, we need it here too. We need to think outside the box, quite literally. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> and I think outside the dome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know you mentioned that they can be aesthetically pleasing. I'm thinking of, you know, I, you know, culturally here in South Florida, you mentioning it, hey, right there on the beach. Was the response, do you know, um, to the owners when they built this? Like, hey, what are you doing building a dome here, like on our beachfront? Right, yeah, no, I mean, it's different, of course, in that the shape is different, but even adding to it and the facades and um, you could just create so much. It's just like a blank canvas to create one of these domes. Um, so incredibly versatile and especially with the interior since there's no supporting walls that are needed you just basically create your own so they're incredibly flexible so That's the people cool. know they didn't mind the design at all and it actually got a small fema grant too to be built so i think more publicly are realizing that okay why do we need to rebuild and go through this process of the post devastation so many times right when we can cut that in half or mitigate it so wow yeah, it's uh, something that 
I, I mean, I want to live in one one day. <laughs> so Do you? One day, hopefully I'll build my own. And yeah, and it's something that I hope that catches on faster than we think. I mean, they've been around for so many centuries and just popularized now for the future and building forward is, is the way to go. Well, thanks for educating us. I love that. So tell me um, about the fundraisers that you have upcoming. I know at the time this episode will air will be mid-January. So I think after that, you have a fundraiser in January. You have the build trip. So tell tell us about how people can get involved, the fundraisers and all of that, if they want to get involved yeah. with Domes for Humanity. Absolutely. So we actually are very happy about having our fun raisers back and we'll be doing one once a month and uh, that'll be the next one will be January 20th and so we're planning a local uh, actually we have it December 23rd as well coming up but I know everyone will be able to come to the next one for January it's a Lake Worth in, at Seven Axes and it's an axe throwing event and it's just fun there's you know, they're popping up in different places and a community event to really bring everyone out in the community, know who we are uh, and get involved in the cause and volunteer as well. So, uh, and then one after that will be for Valentine's Day for February 13th. Um, awesome. So, yeah. And where is that one going to be held? Uh, that yeah. one will be at the Cheese and Wine. Okay. And that's also in Lake Worth, in Lake Worth Beach. It'll be an exciting event. And yeah, we like to put the fun in fundraising because why not? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. tell me about the build trip that you have you said at the first part of next year. Yeah, so we're raising enough funds right now to build uh, at least three to five in the first quarter of the year. So we'll go back, we'll have a team of Haitian volunteers that we will train for about a week and they will be trained to build their own and their neighbors' homes as well. So they're involved in building it with us. So we'll be taking a small team here. So the focus is on training the local community in Haiti how to build. Awesome. Um, so that will take, um, and these homes I didn't get to mention, it's incredibly quick to build. So they are small 15 foot diameter individual family homes and it takes about five days to build. So it's incredibly quick and efficient and the strongest. So wow. it's the perfect solution for disaster relief building. Wow. Wonderful. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so then after that, it'll be a long-term program where we build as funds come in as well. So the goal is 200 and see how quickly we can get there and search for grants as well in the meantime. So to get to 200, I'm guessing you have a fundraising goal of what you need to to meet. Yes. And what yes. is that? So, so we can homes, tell people to go on over to the website and yeah, and yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, one of these homes takes about ten thousand um, dollars into account for just the shell of the building, and once we build one at ten thousand, the next is about sixty to seventy percent of the cost, and that's because the actual air form that we use which is basically like a, a balloon it's what we inflate to build the dome and we spray concrete on the outside of it and then we peel off the air form from the inside and reuse it to build up to 100 domes so the cost becomes yeah. less from materials um, and equipment needed um, for every dome after the first one so we start with 10,000 and we're going to build 200 so the goal is a $2 million budget, so long-term to build these, and that will get us 200 So incredible cost for that amount of homes and over 1,100 families served from that. Wonderful. Well, tell everyone how they can find you, connect with you, the website, social media, and learn more about Domes for Humanity and how to give. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So on our website, it's domesforhumanity.org. And you can go on there, there's a donate page. You can donate once, you can donate monthly. There are a couple of tier options that show you what the money goes towards and it goes right in the ground. 100% of these proceeds go directly to our purpose. Um, so we are a, just um, a volunteer organization. So uh, nobody is full staff, so it's all out of love. <laughs> so this is 
a project that uh, requires people helping people and that's why we want to unite everyone to do that so our social medias you can also go to facebook domes for humanity and instagram same uh, we're there on linkedin as well and twitter so yeah we head to it and you can learn more about our events as well our current events will be posted in a facebook invite yeah, I'm always amazed. I mean, so totally volunteer run organization. Um, yes. Congrats to you. I mean, that really just must speak to your dedication to this project. Oh, definitely. Yep. It's, it's my baby. <laughs> but I'm so thankful for so many hands that have helped and hearts to put uh, so much love into this because everyone sees the vision as well and the mission and only from there we'll be able to expand so yeah i'm Absolutely. very thankful for that so. Daniela, this is great thanks for educating us on domes the importance of them um how they can be implemented the work that you're doing with your nonprofit. is there anything else that you wanted to add that i didn't ask you yeah no if everybody wants to keep up to date you can also subscribe on the website so subscribe and you'll get emails about what we're doing you know how often we're doing it so definitely go on there and put your email in and you know, we won't spam you or just <laughs> give you an update once a month on what we're doing and how you can get involved. So yeah, and I really appreciate it and this opportunity to share and to meet you finally. Absolutely. And one day in person. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. You have to come out to a fundraiser. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Now, I don't know if I'm alone in not knowing the benefits of dome structures, so I certainly learned a lot from Daniela. Hopefully you did too. And also love and admire and applaud the work she is doing with the Domes for Humanity, which again is entirely volunteer run. So bravo to you and also just doing something that's much needed and is helping others. So if you want to help support Domes for Humanity, make sure to go below in the show notes and find the website, connect with Daniela, find out how you can go to one of those fundraisers or go ahead and donate on the website and just learn more about what they're doing. Get involved. And also, if you aren't already, also connected with me I'd love for you to get connected with me I'm all the places LinkedIn you know I always ask you to subscribe on YouTube Facebook Instagram Twitter you can find me everywhere because I'd love to stay connected with you and I'd hate for you to miss out because each and every week we come back with new episodes so I wouldn't want you to miss next week so until then stay happy stay healthy